Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul, my co-host Justin Baker, and I am ready for the NHL playoffs to begin uh, tomorrow as we record this. Uh, they'll, they'll begin in, in basically exactly 24 hours as it's 7 p.m. on a Sunday. Uh, Justin, welcome to our first official The Regular Season is Done show. <laughs> Dude. What a finish to the season it was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was kind of hoping Roman Yossi would hit that 100-point mark, but uh, a little disappointed in that one. So That's, that's true, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple, like, oh, would have would loved to see Goudreau get uh, 90 assists. Um, yes. Oh, JT Miller getting 100 points, too, would have been great. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But, I mean, what, what can you do? Uh, Matthew's got 60. That's pretty cool. Uh, first guy to do that in like 10 years, right? Since Stamkos. Yeah. Uh, uh, third one in the last, what, 22 years? Right, since right. 2000, Him I mean. and Ovechkin and Stamkos are, are it. Good good company. Yeah. Uh, well, the regular season is, I think I think we'll probably like, we'll, we'll do some kind of awards show at some point. Uh, but of course, you know, with the playoffs starting in 24 hours, uh, we kind of get it. We just have to get a jump on uh, on the playoff previews, um, so we'll we'll do that. Look out for a show later on with some awards. We'll, you know, maybe maybe that'll just be at the end of the playoffs because we're going to have uh, a good solid amount to talk about. I do have something to bitch about though. No, oh, if that's please. okay. Um, so the first two rounds of the playoffs, you know, this whole season, I I'm paying for ESPN Plus. Cool. That's all. That's what I need. I got ESPN Plus. And and I'm able to watch most of the games, and then like I've got a I've got a sling account for for the other ones, and I was like, well, I don't need the ESPN version of the sling because I've got ESPN Plus. Oh, I'll just get the other one because it also has TNT and TBS. And uh, turns out, oh, the first round, oh, none of the games are going to be on the pl- on ESPN Plus, only on the actual ESPN and ESPN two stations. So I. I had to go switch my account over so that I can watch those. And it's just kind of BS. Like, why am I paying ESPN money to not be able to watch ESPN? That's, Dude, that is, yeah. It's dumb. It's ridiculous. That is kind of dumb. <laughs> like, it, it's fine if you, like, if you're, if, if there is some contingent, hey, we're, you know, you can't watch these. Well, just tell me, like, hey, I have to pay an extra five dollars for the month or something like that. I don't care. I, I would have done it. <laughs> it just it just seems dumb uh, that I have ESPN Plus, but I can't watch NHL games on ESPN two. I I don't I don't understand. That's dumb. Um, I mean, yeah. I under, I understand, <laughs> but I don't care. I think it's dumb. I think it's just it's just <laughs> one of the. It's like such an NHL thing to do. You know, oh hey, let's let's uh, let's have games on ESPN that you can't watch on ESPN's app. Okay, sounds good. Sounds like Gary Bettman had his hands in that one. Uh, anyways, uh. that's that's all uh, that's all I've got to uh, complain about because the playoffs are here. Uh, we we figured that we're going to start with we'll do all the uh, the number one seeds versus the wild cards. Uh, if you missed our Minnesota, St. Louis, and Dallas, uh, Edmonton Oilers. LA Kings preview. We did a separate show just for those two teams because they were the first two that were uh, decided a little while ago, probably like four or five days ago. Um, so we already did a show. You can subscribe to the show. Go back, listen to that. It is a freaking hoot. Uh, it starts off a little funny, but uh, it, it goes. I mean, it just starts off because I hit the record button and we and Justin was in the middle of a sentence. So, you know, sometimes you just got to do weird things like that. But uh, yeah, we're... We're going to start with all the number ones, and then we'll do the number two and three, the Tampa, Toronto, and New York, Pittsburgh. We'll, uh, we'll close out with those two. Um, Justin, dealer's choice here for the first series that we go through. First uh, one versus wild card. Where should we start? Mm, let's go with Calgary and Dallas. Okay. All right. Calgary, Dallas. Um, give, me your, give me your initial thoughts on this series because, I mean, really it was like – on Friday, when the Nashville Predators were up four nothing on the Arizona Coyotes, uh, it, you know you looked at that and I went, "Oh, okay, great, Calgary's playing uh, playing Nashville. Like this is that's how it's going to go." And then I I think I 
I don't know what I did. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't watching that game. I didn't care. <laughs> it didn't seem like a good game to watch. Um, but Arizona has like the best game of their season comes back down for nothing wins in friggin' regulation and the predators pull the abs instead. Uh, quite a, like there's been some good mid season collapse, like uh, game collapses, you know, third period collapses by teams throughout the year. I don't know if any have been quite that devastating because now you got to play the avalanche, which I guess <laughs> their avalanche star- flames. I don't know that it really mattered for Nashville because without UC Soros, it's going to be a lot of sorrows for the Predators, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but you said Calgary, Dallas, so let's start there. Uh, give yeah. me your give me your thoughts on on Dallas and Calgary. Well, I mean, listen, just uh, when you look at one side, when you look at Calgary, you obviously have just a very tight and well rounded team, right? They're just not. I mean, obviously, we know about the big three up front, right? It kind of reminds me a little bit about a little bit of Boston a couple of years ago, where they had the perfection line just rolling hot. But the difference is with this Calgary team, right? They've got depth beyond those guys right there. So, um, you know, you can look at, you know, again, Tyler Toffoli, um, you know, Michael Backlund. They've got guys down the the lineup that can score as well. So it's not just a one trick pony like it was in Boston a few years ago. So, and not only that too, but they don't have that that superstar defenseman either because this team is playing such good defensive hockey on the back end. And then of course they have, in my opinion, probably one of the top three or four goalies going into the postseason here in Jacob Markstrom. So uh, that'll be a challenge on its own for the young Jake Ottinger to kind of try to match, go toe for toe with this goaltender here. Um, You know, can he do it? I'm a little doubtful, but you know, again, you've got a veteran Dallas team as well. That's, you know, a couple of years removed from the Stanley Cup final. So, you know, they're they're a team that knows what it takes to get far in the postseason, unlike a lot of these, you know, players on Calgary. So uh, but of course they've got, you know, Mr. Sutter behind the bench who's who's got some bling to show off. So uh maybe that might be the difference as well. Uh yes, coach of the year, Daryl Sutter. Uh but yeah. there's there's a reason that he's likely going to take that trophy home. Yeah, you know, it, it is forgotten. Um uh, and it often the team that loses in the Stanley Cup Finals is that team that just kind of gets forgotten about. Um, but which, by the way, last year's top four going into uh, the Stanley Cup Finals, you've got Vegas, Montreal, New York Islanders, and Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, the only team to make the playoffs. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, for for all the talk that hey, the same teams make it in every year, yada yada. I mean three of the top four teams last year did not make the playoffs. And not only did they not make the playoffs, I mean, a couple of those, those teams, I mean, Montreal finished, uh, did, were they dead last or was, was Arizona dead, dead last. last, dead last. Dead last. So from Stanley cup finals to dead last, um, uh, I don't know that, I don't know the last time that happened. Uh, it's the first time Montreal finished last place in the league since 1940. And oh yeah, there was only six freaking teams in the league. So it, <laughs> if you finish last, it was like, Hey, we're one, we're six of six and no big deal. Uh, Montreal's 32 of 32. Uh, uh, uh just first ever a, a church year. Although, placing team. The, although their last game of the regular season, what, what I did see, you know, coming into that game, they were minus, a hundred and six in goal differential, and they have never finished a season with a minus one hundred or more, like a triple digit minus goal differential. And winning that game against the Florida Panthers ten to freaking two puts them at a minus ninety eight for the year, and they avoid going negative a hundred uh, on the goal differential. So I just thought that was a a fun little fact uh i guess they ended the season on as much of a high note as you can have in a last place finish season right <laughs> yeah it'll be even better if they get the number one pick but uh something tells me that's not going to happen so i wonder when the last time the two worst teams in the nhl both win their final game of the regular season um and in the fashion that those two teams did a, a 10-2 win and a comeback a down four goal comeback to win in regulation just uh, a goofy you know, not everyone's playing on the the better teams, but just a goofy finish to the season. Uh, 
Yeah, Calgary and Dallas. (laughs) Got to get back to them, the series that we're talking about. Uh, What do you think about the way... Now, we we know the two top lines for both these teams are fantastic. Uh, I think it's it's pretty apparent Calgary has the depth and Dallas does not. You know, that's been the glaring hole for the Dallas Stars. You watch them all year and... When that top line is on, when Jason Robertson and Rupe Hints and Joel Pavelski are on the ice, that team is as good as any team. Like, that line's as good as any other line that you can throw at them. When the rest of the team's on the ice, sometimes they look like the Arizona Coyotes. Like, it is that big of a, a swap at times. Uh, so, to me, it it's going to all fall back onto the defensive side. How do you think Dallas holds up defensively against Calgary. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the question mark, right? I think they, they have the pieces on the back end to compete against, uh, especially against Calgary's top line, right? And so maybe even better to match up against the depth because when you look at, you know, obviously we know Miro Heiskanen, uh, Essa Lindell, we know the names back, you know, on that back end. But the question is, you know, when Ryan Suter and, and Heiskanen aren't playing against Goudreau in that line, can Lindell, can, you know, the rest of that defensive unit, can they match up? Can they slow them down? Because obviously it's going to get to a situation where, you know, last change might come into play a little bit more. And obviously Calgary's got the home ice. So they're going to try to get that matchup that they want. And, you know, for Calgary, right on the flip side, their defense, they don't care who they roll out against that top line. They'll roll out their first, second, or third pair. As far as, you know, Suter's concerned, he doesn't give a crap. And uh, I don't think, the rest of that team cares either right because they're just they play such a tight defensive structured game back there uh the one thing i will say you talked about depth right so for me if jamie ben and tyler sagan show up that's the only chance this dallas team has at getting past calgary in the first round 100 percent. i mean if the if those two guys can kind of you know and we've seen it before where you essentially you kind of draw back on the the past skill you had and you go you know what like Time to ramp it up. Uh, I think if anyone can, it's Tyler Sagan. Like I, I oh, feel sure. like he he really took a big step back this year, and I don't know if it really like he really projects out to be as kind of lackluster as he has been. I, I think that he probably is is better than what he's shown this year. I mean, forty nine points, a, a basically a fifty point season, right? But a, a minus twenty one, uh, which just doesn't doesn't look good on anybody but at the same time he did play he started the year playing with uh like Alexander Radulov who will probably should retire at the end of this year um <laughs> or he's going to go into a like he's playing fourth line minutes now but earlier in the year you know you're playing with Sagan and Sagan like he just was kind of dragging everything down um now Jamie Ben uh, he he, I mean, he is what he is. You know, I don't think that Jamie Ben's going to get much better, but I do think that playoff time plays into his hand a little more. Being that big power forward, uh, I think that you know potentially he has a a better first round than he did regular season. I mean, eighteen goals in eighty two games. You know, maybe he ends up with three or four goals in uh, in a seven game series if it, assuming it goes that long, which. I doubt many people have going very long. Uh, but, man, that top line is still freaking good. And Dallas has shown that when the game is on the line, they can show up and they can win those games. So so there is that factor. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. They have the experience of going to the finals. They know what it takes to win rounds of the playoffs. And the Calgary Flames really don't. I mean, how many players on that team... Uh, Milan Lucic, and it's been a it's been a minute. Um, Trevor Lewis, who uh, Callie Yarncroke, I think was on Nashville when they went to the finals. So, <laughs> yeah. and then Blake Coleman, Blake Coleman won won two cups with with LA. And don't or, forget or Tyler Dufoley. Uh, and Tyler Dufoley, yeah. Did, yeah, yeah. Was he on LA when they won the cup? He was. Okay, he must have been first or second year then in 2014. See that old? Oh yeah, he is. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, he is. They won that one cup. All right. Well, hey, I mean, that's that's eight years ago. <laughs> uh, what what else do you got for this series? Anything? Any other thoughts? 
No, I mean, really, right, Jake Ottinger, I mean, we haven't talked about the goaltending, but really it's going to come down to can this guy step up and perform. We know what Jacob Markstrom's going to bring. I mean, he obviously led the league in shutouts and, uh, you know, one of the top goalies in the league. And then there's Ottinger, who is just kind of a, a mixed bag at times. You know, he went, he seemed to be up and down for most of the season. And, you know, going into the season, I thought we'd see Braden Holtby or maybe possibly Ben Bishop at some point. But, of course, you know, Bishop retires and Holtby kind of fades into oblivion here. I don't know what happened to him, but uh, it's Jay Gottinger's net and he'll be the guy they go to. So can he step up to the challenge? Yeah, and let's, one one player that I, I guess, you know, we need to talk about maybe an X factor or some someone that you look to that could potentially make a huge difference. Let's not forget that Rupe Hints in the year that the Stars went to the Stanley Cup Finals had 26 points in 27 games and had six goals. Uh, he was a, like a revelation. I mean, that was really his big coming out party. But uh, if he can do something like that again, if he can bottle up what he did in those playoffs, which, I mean, hey, this last year, he was only a 36-point guy. Uh, but he found his mojo in the playoffs. Like you thought, You saw those playoffs and you thought, Next year, this guy's going to come out and he's going to have 60 or 70 points. Nope, 27, 36. Like, it, he hasn't been a huge point producer that he showed in those playoffs, but that might be what Dallas needs, honestly. Uh, they, they, they need a Miro Heiskanen who can, uh, who can drive the offense because it, there's, there just isn't much beyond that first line. And I guess my question really is, how many shutouts does Jacob Marshall end up with? <laughs> right the goal scoring is a challenge i mean once you get past uh that top line and tyler sagan it's it's pretty much who pretty dry so yeah yeah if, luke glendening's not scoring you too many goals <laughs> i mean he's got nine for a fourth line guy i'm i'm not too depressed i mean luke glendening right he's going to be a penalty killer he's going to be a he's, fourth line he's not there guy, to score so. goals i know i know no yeah 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 <laughs> but another guy maybe there who might score some goals for this team uh, former Detroit Red Wing as well, yeah. Vladimir Nemestikov. So he could he can ship in a little offense. So maybe you know he steps it up. And, well, uh, yeah. And unfortunately yeah. for him, he would. I mean, he went there and he was he played for what a couple of weeks. He he only got to play in fifteen games because he got hurt there for a little while. So um, it, it'll be you know I think the fact that I mean he was able to play in enough games where that you can kind of figure out where he fits. But uh, it'll be interesting to see because i mean he he can really play up and down in the lineup uh you know he can he could and you don't want him on your first line but he could move up into your uh your second line and or your third line and and shift around he hey, he's got two goals in the last four games for this team and uh he can put the puck in the net that's that's really it is he somebody who can actually put the, put the puck in the net um which is rare for the dallas stars outside of that first line so um, and he, I, I believe he's he's been to the playoffs with with Tampa Bay, uh, a good amount. So yeah, he's played forty one playoff games. So uh, definitely has that playoff experience as well. Played with Tampa Bay and also with Colorado. So Nemestikov, keep an eye out on him. Um, all right. Well, I guess with that said, do we give our our prediction for this series? Why not? Why Why wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> What do you have? I've got a short one. Uh, Calgary in five games. I just honestly think that, um, you know, if you if you somehow manage to go top line for top line, the depth of Calgary and the defensive structure is too much, and Markstrom shuts it down. And really, I think, you know, Jamie Benn's going to be almost non-existent in my opinion. I, you know, again, he could surprise me and show up, but to me, I think he doesn't even bother to make an appearance other than his physical game. And so, uh, really, it's just, it's going to be a quick one. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, excuse me, the Dallas stars were one and two against the Calgary flames in the regular season. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not as if they, it's impossible for them to beat the Calgary flames. Uh, but I, I do think you're right. It is going to be the Calgary flames who take this series. Uh, Dallas will win at least a game. Uh, probably with their backs against the wall in like a game four down three zero, they'll uh, they'll win one for the Gipper, and uh, and then Calgary takes it back in in game five. I'm gonna 
I'm going to go right with you as well and say that it's going to be the Calgary Flames in five. Okay. All right. Uh, next series, I'll, I'll I'll pick where we go. Let's let's ride on over to the east. Um, I want to talk some Carolina Boston. I'm, Ooh. I'm pretty excited for this series. I think this series is going to be uh, a real good one. Um, Boston has been I mean, towards the end of the season a little bit better, and I'd say that Carolina, while they didn't take a step backwards, uh, I I'm just concerned about their goaltending. I think it gives Boston an in. I think I think out of any of the wild card teams in these playoffs, the team with the best chance to win is the Boston Bruins. I don't know that there's like there's any doubt about that either. I, I maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I I well I may not pick the Bruins to win the series. I could definitely see this series going a good seven games. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I think again when you look at this the way this season ended for both these teams, right? It, it looks like Boston is rolling right along. And, and then of course the goaltending is the, is the big question mark going into the series, right? If that's going to be an X factor, uh, I mean, anti Ratna shown up since, gosh, I think it was March 1st or maybe April 1st. I can't remember what it was. I read, I, he's only, he's put up a subpar, I think it's 898 save percentage. It's, it's, it's below 900. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and for a guy that plays on a team that plays as good of a structured game as as they do a team game, right? They roll those those three lines very very well, one right after the other. No, they don't miss a beat, and uh, you know they obviously lack a superstar. They you know have the Sebastian Ajos of the world, but uh, he's not a true superstar. And so, you know, on the other end, we've got Boston that's that's got the perfection line up front, but. You know, at the same time, they've they found a lot of success with DeBrusque on that top line and and Hall and and you know Pasta on that second line. It seems to work really, really well, and I think that's gonna that's gonna play a little bit more. You know, it's gonna give Cal or Carolina a little bit more trouble. And Linus Allmark can he show up? I mean, both these goalies in Boston have no playoff experience, so uh, really you're you're rolling the dice with either one. But honestly, I've I've got faith the way they the way they play, much like Carolina. Right, they play a nice tight defensive structured game and uh when push comes to shove i guess really it's it's up to this forward group to to get it done for both these teams yes absolutely i mean the the forward group is going to uh to drive this whole thing but from a defensive standpoint I me mean, you are looking at two of maybe the two of the deeper defensive teams uh with with hampus lindholm going to boston I and mean, that just uh it sounds like he's going to go for the playoffs so you've got him, you've got McAvoy, Matt Grizzlick. I, I mean, maybe depth wise, they they don't compare super well with Carolina down the depth chart. But as far as those high end guys, um, I think you can go Slavin and, and McAvoy, and you could go toe to toe with those guys, and you're not going to go wrong taking one or the other. Um, and then I I don't know that anyone has a Hampus Lindholm uh, in this. Like Carolina doesn't have necessarily have a guy like that uh, who is really built for the playoffs. Although, I mean, when's the last time he was in the playoffs? Uh, 2016? 2017? Yeah, been a few years. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute, um, which is, you know, hey, maybe why he didn't re-sign in Anaheim. Uh, but, yeah, it's, I mean, Hant- Hampus Lindholm is a defensive wild card like that Boston has. I mean, it's the reason they brought him in. He really can make a huge difference on that back end. And, I mean, with him getting hurt, you know, Boston was absolutely rolling when they got him. And then he got hurt and Boston kind of started to come back down to normal. I'm wondering, you know, assuming that he's actually healthy and he's not just like, I'll suit up for the playoffs. Sure. Uh, I I wonder if that really plays a a big factor because uh, maybe the standings don't reflect the talent on the Boston Bruins. Granted, they have a freaking 107-point season. They won 51 games, and we're talking about them being like, oh, they just snuck in. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though, they obviously, they didn't just sneak in. They were 23 points up on the, the team on the outside of the playoffs, but they were a wild-card team. So it just goes to show you how top-heavy this thing is, and uh, it's, it's going to be a battle for every single team in the playoff. They're, they're are no easy outs even more so this year than I think any other year we've never seen 13 teams with 100 points in a regular season 97 points to make the playoffs in the 
uh, in the West and a hundred to make it in the East. That is just crazy. You needed a hundred points to make the playoffs. That's uh, a new record as well. So you're just looking at a bunch of really good teams. Uh, and I think that it's going to be maybe harder this year than any other year to pick winners in these series because these teams have just been so good and so dominant that there's not that big of a difference between a two and a three uh, when you really when push comes to shove. Uh, but when you look at the goaltending, what what are you feeling there? Yeah, you know it's it's a mixed bag, right? If Freddie Anderson obviously not going to be ready for Game One, but if he comes back at some point in this series and depending on, you know, if he's a hundred percent, if he's anywhere close to that, right. He could be the wild card or X factor for Carolina, this series, because if anti Ratna doesn't show up for game one, it could be a very short series for them. I mean, I hate to say it, um, yeah, which he's been so, pretty, he's been good. Yeah. He's been good at points in the season, but like I said, the last month, month and a half, he's been pretty pedestrian. So, you know, which guy are you going to get in the playoffs here? You hope right. that he's that, you know, you hope that what you had at the beginning of the season with him is what you get in the playoffs. And so if, if he does show up, if he does give them even like 905, 910 save percentage, I think Carolina would have a decent shot then at that point of, of winning this series. And, you know, again, like I mentioned, it's, it's going to come down to, you know, who can score the last goal, I feel like, in this series. Not necessarily that's going to be a high-scoring series, but – um, I think it's going to be a, a, a grind it out kind of let's let's win it three to two kind of series. Yeah, yeah. I I I'm sure that one of those games Carolina will blow them out uh, just because they do have they do have a good amount of depth up front. Uh, but anti Ranta, you know, no playoff experience outside of three games for the New York Rangers in fifteen sixteen. Uh, did not start any of those games though. He, uh, he just played in them. Same with Arizona. Did not start either of the games. He just played in them. Uh, and so, hey, you're playing a goalie who's never started a playoff game before. Uh, Frederick Anderson has a ton to prove. That could certainly be a an X factor as well. If he can come back, man, does he have the world to prove. Um, and, you know, secretly, deep down inside, see, there's, there's a – it's a – it's a win-win for me. It doesn't whichever team wins this series, um, if they can go on, you know, assuming that the Leafs make it to the conference finals, you know, maybe you're either looking at a Freddie Anderson versus the Leafs or a Bruins versus the Leafs. That's that's a, a fun possibility there uh, to get into the Stanley Cup Finals. So we'll we'll see about that. But um, yeah, I mean Jeremy Sh- Jeremy Swayman no playoff experience either. So it's not as if you know there's there's a, a bulwark in the in the playoff games on the other side and and uh, so there's really not much to to worry about in terms of that I'm, I'm sorry he did play in one playoff game last year he played for how many minutes 19 minutes in last year's play in 2021 mm. uh, and he lost <laughs> so <laughs> he got the l he he didn't even start the game and he got the l only played 19 minutes that's that's like you have to try to do that uh all right, so who do you have in the series? What are, what, what are you picking? Yeah, uh, this one could be, I don't know if you want to call it that, but could be my potential first upset. I'm going to take Boston to win the series in seven games. Wow, yeah, and that would be, I mean, I think Boston, of course, has the has the always has the expectations of winning the Cup. Like, that just is Boston. Um, but I think when we looked at them at the beginning of the year and we went, you know, this team could is going to make the playoffs, but probably lose in the first round. Um, I'm going to stick with that prediction because I'm I distinctly remember saying that uh, in our <laughs> preview of the season. Uh, I'm I think sure that I that's did as exa- well. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what they look like. I mean, yes, hey, this might be Patrice Bergeron's last playoff run. We don't know, you know. I mean, he could come back to the Bruins next year. Doesn't mean the Bruins are making the playoffs in this crazy Eastern Conference, uh, but. Who knows? This might be his last run. That could also be a, a an X factor. You know, if we we see him kind of going even further to the wall because he knows, hey, I might not play again. Maybe I don't. Maybe he doesn't want to play. We don't, we don't really know. Um, he's going to pull the you know the one year contracts. I think for the rest of his career. So we'll see how how much longer he goes. Um, but I I gotta say, 
Carolina is going to finish off the Boston Bruins as Freddie Anderson returns, as does strong goaltending. Freddie Anderson shakes off his own playoff demons, wins his first series, and moves on to the second round. But it's going to take seven games, and he's going to have to have uh, a better game seven than he has in the past. All right. Um, Okay, let's go back to the Western Conference then. We'll do uh, Colorado-Nashville. I guess what what do you like for Nashville going into this series? Oh, yeah. What do I like about Nashville? I mean, look, they they got a good forward group up front. They're playing pretty good um, for the most part. But, you know, it's – when you look at what's on the other side of the fence, I mean, you know, metaphorically speaking, it. I mean, it's just – it doesn't even compare, and it's kind of hard. I feel kind of bad, right? I mean, I would have said Nashville had a decent shot at this had UC Soros been healthy, been ready sure. to go. Uh, you know, because, again, they've got a good top line, right? Duchesne, Forsberg, Granlin are firing on all cylinders. Roman Yossi – in my opinion, as the Norris Trophy winner this year. He has looked phenomenal for this team. I mean, 73 assists. So you know this team's going to play well with those guys on the ice. But beyond that, it gets a little shaky, a little dicey. And, I mean, look, special team-wise, both these teams, they're running at statistically similar power plays and penalty kills. Uh, The goals against are a little bit higher for Nashville, and the goals for are a little bit less for Nashville. So, all those things into account and literally a 22 point difference in standings. Obviously we know Colorado, how dominant they were at the beginning of the year. They kind of cooled off a little bit towards the end, but um, I mean, look, the firepower they have up front just is going to be far too much for this Nashville team. Again, I like their top line, but when you go beyond that, it gets kind of like a mixed bag, you know, can, you know, Ryan Johansson show up, um, you know, is this going to be a disaster of a playoff? Because, again, Phil Forsberg, right, has been having a phenomenal season and he's looking to continue that in the playoffs. But this is a guy who's a UFA this year. So if Nashville doesn't show up and give him a reason to have some optimism about the future of this team going up against the Colorados of the world, why is he going to want to hang around? You know, he might bolt. And so I know Nashville will throw all the money they can at him to try to keep him around. But Are you trying to say he's going to the Tampa Bay Lightning? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, gosh, I could see him going to Colorado for. I mean, no, not really. You said, but, you said he was going to bolt. That's why. I, uh, yeah, I get it now. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, I uh. mean, but I will say the one X factor in the series for Nashville for me is going to be Tanner Janot. Uh, I love the physicality he brings to the game. I love the just the energy he has. And so when you look at depth, guys, right? I mean, he could be a guy that really could get under the skin of some Avalanche players, i.e., maybe a Nazem Kadri, and you know, if he's out on another suspension, that's going to be problematic. But, um, yeah, I again, I just think the firepower for this Colorado team is just far too much. And, you know, again, beyond Roman Yossi, and it's just there's nothing back there to make me too excited. I mean, in fairness, Matt Duchesne did have a career year, and Philip Forsberg scored 42 goals. So there are pieces. Um, I just think they're going to get shut down pretty like pretty easily um there's just too much firepower for colorado i don't think it's going to be a super easy out because nashville plays really hard like if colorado decides to take them for granted uh nashville could win a few games here uh sure i i think when push comes to shove colorado does win this series especially and now when I, you know, from the digging I've done, looking around at, at articles, uh, specifically like guys that are around the team, uh, commenting about Juicy Saros, the Predators keep, seems like they keep saying that they're they're hoping that he'll be available for Game One, and that they're hoping that he'll be available for the playoffs. And it seems like it might just be a little smokescreen. I I don't know that he plays Game One, but he will. be likely be back I think probably game two or three uh, but it's just not going to be enough I, I don't I don't care Saros plays all seven games Colorado's going to win four of them so uh, I, I'm not taking Colorado in seven I'll be I'll be taking Colorado in five okay yeah um, I am taking Colorado as well but I think again no UC Saros um, this top line on Nashville is probably going to get shut down or if not matched puck for puck 
And so the depth of Colorado is going to come through, and it's going to be a quick one and four. Okay. Uh, yeah, Nashville did did manage to beat Colorado once this year out of four tries. So, and that's the only time they're going to do it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, okay, let's let's move back to the Eastern Conference for our final one versus wild card matchup. It's uh, Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals are uh, are going into the Florida Panthers territory, and they're going to try and see what they can do. I, I guess that's the best way to describe what they're going to do. They're just going to see what they can do because uh, from my vantage point, watching the Florida Panthers all year long, not uh, the last game of the regular season notwithstanding, uh, the Florida Panthers have just been utterly dominant over whomever they play. Uh, it's going to be real tough for a team that has nowhere near the depth as the Panthers. Um, and by the way, the Panthers have been doing this with out Aaron Eckblad, who is he's supposed to be coming back. I, I hear he's going to be back for this series at some point. So, uh, yeah, where where do you see this series going? Um, which which oh. by the way, uh, yeah the the Washington Capitals against the Florida Panthers this regular season uh, they were one one and one. So you know Florida was two and one against the against the or the the capitals so take that for what it's worth yeah i mean how often do you get a guy coming back i mean aaron eckblag right if he returns at some point that's pretty much a point per game player right uh that's going to be troublesome um but again this we know how good this florida team is right i mean there's no surprise they're just they're so dominant i mean everybody from the first to the fourth line is just producing and clicking on all cylinders i mean and you just look right up at the top right i mean jonathan huberdo he's 85 assists i mean that's just a ridiculous number uh that harkens back to you know the joe thornton and jonathan chichu days of old um and then of course you know there's sasha barkoff there's this guy who can literally shut down anybody on the ice he can win face-offs you name it he will do everything for this team so that's going to be extremely problematic and then you know, of course, they they just have the depth. Sam Reinhardt, Sam Bennett. I mean, you name it. Your pick for the Calder Cup at the midway point. There. I mean, they uh, they got they got some good players. And then, oh, you know what? They've uh, they've got this other guy named Joe Thornton, who I'm I'm hoping we'll see. You know, play a few games there too, which would be uh, super fun to watch him. But um, yeah, I just I think honestly, when when push comes to shove, the biggest. Uh, X factor in this whole series is going to be the speed game, right? I think Florida is just a little bit too fast. Uh, Washington's just, you know, got old legs as much as I hate to say it, right? Ovechkin, Backstrom, these guys just, you know, TJ Oshie. I just don't think these guys are going to be able to keep up with the speed of Florida, and I think eventually it's just going to come to bite them. And then, you know, beyond that, the bigger concern for Washington is the goaltending, right? Um, you know, Vanacek and Samsonov have not put up good numbers at all this season so Probably the, the worst goaltending walking into this minus uh carolina situation right <laughs> so you know again no matter i i don't think they, they have any chance at all no matter who they put in that in this series i haven't even looked to see who's starting i mean my guess it's sam Sonoff, but um that's not any better than the guy behind him so really it's just it's very bleak for this washington team just like you said See what you can do. Yeah, uh, I mean, and and not to not to mention, I don't know if you brought up if I couldn't, I can't remember if you said uh, Claude Giroux's name in in all that, but you know, Claude Giroux only has uh, twenty three points in his first eighteen games as a Florida Panther. Yeah, only, <laughs> only. Yeah, I mean, he only has three goals, but he's setting everybody else up. Uh, you know, and a guy who for the Panthers who had a pretty lackluster season, uh, he was hurt a little bit. Patrick Hornfist. Uh, I mean, here's a guy who's just, he's built for the playoffs. Uh, so if, if Hornquist, you know, if he's, uh, he's coming in, he's coming in healthy. I think, man, you, you just, I just, I love his game come playoff time because he's someone you, who is not afraid to go to the net, uh, when guys are literally just trying to kill you. <laughs> like this right. isn't, this isn't October going to the net. This guy is going to go to the net when no one else will. I mean, I kind of compare, uh, not that he was putting up the same numbers uh, in his prime, but 
I, I kind of compare them like a Corey Perry and a Patrick Hornfist in terms of what they do. You know, he maybe won't get the same opportunities because of Florida's depth, but hey, in the playoffs, guys go down all the time. And Patrick Hornquist could be a really important part of the playoffs because he is a he is not afraid to go to those danger zones. Uh, he still has pretty decent hands. We'll see what he can do for the Panthers too. You know, I, you could basically talk about every single player on this roster as being somebody who could potentially blow up for this team because they've all been so good. Yeah, and here's another guy, right? We haven't really even mentioned uh, who was so good last year in the playoffs, which is why Florida went after him. But Ben Sherratt, right? I mean. Right. Are they going to get this if they get the same guy from last year or even pretty close to that? I mean, they've got three other guys outside of um, outside of Aaron Eckblad, right? Forsling, Montour, Weger, who have all put up 37 plus points and double digit goals. So they've got so much production on that back end that even if you just don't take that into factor, this team is just so dangerous up front, right? So there's just, again, the depth in which they get production is just so dangerous for a Washington team that is just a little top heavy in my mind and a little too old, a little rusty. So yeah. we'll see. And by the way, uh, head coach Andrew Brunette of the Panthers, he did say today in their presser that there's a chance Ekblad returns for game one. So uh, oh. sounds like uh sounds like a threat. If, if I've ever heard one, uh, yeah, but and, and maybe he doesn't come think, back. But. Yeah. What the great thing is, like I mentioned, this team's so deep on defense, they don't need to have him play 25 minutes a night to start the playoffs and that's, when he comes that's back. That's the beautiful thing. You can put you can play him on the power play. He doesn't need to play the penalty kill where where he's at more risk of, of getting hurt there in the penalty kill. So, I mean, you can you really can deploy him as you need. Uh, I mean, he's he, he'll still play 18 minutes, 20 minutes in the game and, and be an incredibly effective player for you. Um, but at the same time, if you're Florida, if he's not ready to go and two or three more days is what he needs, you're going to give it to him because frankly, you're just really not worried about, even if you lose game one, I I think you're, you're feeling pretty confident about what you have. Yeah. I mean, if this was the opposite, right. With John Carlson and Washington, if he was hurt and maybe might be able to come back for game one, you're putting him in and he's still playing. Guard his own shots, brother. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's let's give our pick for this series. Uh, who do you have, Florida or Washington? Well, I've definitely got Florida, uh, but I think Washington, unlike Nashville and Colorado, I think uh, Washington squeaks out one game and they end up closing it out in five. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give the Capitals uh, a little bit of love. And they're just things just seem to go right for them sometimes. Uh, I I think that they they've they've got something in there. They'll they'll push it to six games and just make it sort of interesting. Uh, but I could see this being like game six, the Panthers win like 7-1 and just torch <laughs> them. And just like, yeah, you, you don't have any business being here. You know, yeah, the Capitals yeah. can play a good tight game here and there. So we'll, we'll see. They they definitely have playoff experience. They, there's guys on that team that have won before. So uh, there's there, there's a little bit there. But, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'm not – if they swept them, I wouldn't be surprised. The only thing okay. that would surprise me is if the Capitals actually won that series. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's go to the Rangers and the Penguins. This one is, uh, boy, I mean, this is going to be a goaltending battle. I, I think it's it wasn't too long ago that if you said Rangers-Penguins, we'd all be talking about the Penguins' offense and, uh, I get, you know, I guess the Rangers goaltending, but I mean, here we are where it's really about Tristan Jari and uh, Igor Shesterkin head to head. Boy. Yeah. I mean, but here's the thing though. It's, it was reported that Tristan Jari um, is not going to start in the playoffs. Oh, right. Yes. You're right. Yep. Yeah. I I did know that. So it's, it's Casey to Smith's net. Now I don't know again, how long he's going to be out. He hasn't played since Jari hasn't played since April 14th. So, uh, hasn't been too long, but um, it's Casey to Smith's net. And I mean, look, uh, when you know he was down the stretch here, he's since the All Star break, he's been eight three and three, a nine twenty save percentage. So it hasn't been too bad for DeSmith. But again, that's that's a limited time, right? And um, not necessarily under pressure on him. And he's probably, I mean, I haven't looked at the specific games, but uh, probably been playing some of the easier teams like your Buffaloes and Ottawa's, for example. But uh, you know, again. 
I think this is a team that relies heavily, at least from you know Pittsburgh, they rely heavily on their forward group to get it done for them, right? They play such smart hockey, right? You look at the, these guys they have, Jake Gensel, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, these are Jeff Carter, such smart, high IQ hockey players that have been there. They have the rings to show for it. So they know how to get it done. They know what it takes to grind in the playoffs. And so you come against the New York Ranger team that's a little bit more fresh in the playoffs, right? Outside, I mean, right, Panarin's been there. He's he's done it. But really outside of that, there's not much experience when it comes to going deep in the playoffs for this Rangers team. So is that going to be the X factor, right? Because now when you look at goaltending, obviously Shesterkin is the guy here. He's going to, you know, if you had to go head-to-head with him and DeSmith, it's, it's clear that Shesterkin would come out on top. But, uh, man, given the, the IQ in front of him in that forward group versus the Rangers, I don't know. It, it could change things a little bit. Well, and it depends. Does Chris Kreider have, continue a, you know, a 50-goal pace in the playoffs, scoring more than every other game? Uh, that's That's been a huge portion of their offense. We know in the playoffs, it's you know a lot of times those top lines get shut down. Uh, the Rangers have been better since uh, Andrew Kopp comes in. I mean, he's a point per game, more than a point per game, eight, eight goals and 10 assists in 16 games. Uh, he has been fantastic for the Rangers. Probably uh, without Andrew Kopp, I'm, even even with Casey DeSmith, I'm picking Pittsburgh, um, but Andrew Kopp really makes it. He, he pulls them very close together. Uh, and, I mean, yes, the Rangers have the goaltending especially statistically you look over the course of the whole year man do they have the goaltending but Shesterkin has not played like a heart trophy candidate in the last month six weeks of the season he's he's been more average which still i mean if you're average in the playoffs you're still you're still doing pretty darn good uh but it, it would worry me uh if if he isn't just lights out i mean he's the reason the rangers finished where they finished if he's not lights out, I think the Penguins' offense can take advantage. Uh, by the way, Jari misses game one and two, as well as Jason Zucker came out game one and two. Okay, yeah, so there's another depth piece for them. But, I mean, look, I I think, you know, obviously, yeah, Shesterkin, he, he kind of went through a little bit of a roller coaster there the last few weeks of the season. But, I mean, he finished out strong, two shutouts in his last five games. Uh, granted, against Winnipeg and Detroit, but still teams that can score goals and uh, looked good against Boston, looked okay against Carolina two times. Uh, you know, and maybe the Rangers get lucky and my prediction comes right and they don't have to play Carolina in the second round. So we don't have to worry about that for him. But I mean, look, it, this really comes down to right to the depth at the Ford group. I think, you know, again, you could go Adam Fox for Chris Letang. They're a wash, in my opinion. Um, but when you look at the forward group, I think, like you mentioned, Andrew Kopp is the X factor for me. He's good to go. Panarin's good to go. Those guys have developed such good chemistry in that second line. And it gives teams, opposing teams, something more to fear than just what they have at Chris Kreider, you know, on their top line putting up 50 goals. So now you can look at Panarin and Kopp, and they can go out there, and they can light it up. Uh, and Strom's not too bad either. So they just have so many weapons. And then Alex Lafreniere has been turning it up at the end of the season here, and he's playing third line minutes. So now you got to worry about this guy who's just been, you know, on fire lately. So you know, I'd love to see it. Clicking. I would. Lo- I would love to see him have his, his coming out party in these playoffs. It would be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, that, that would be that would be very fun. I mean, let's let's also not forget Evgeny Malkin is more than a point per game. He's he was on a a forty forty goal pace this year. Uh, in 41 games, you know, Sidney Crosby, I mean, 84 points in 69 games. The guy is just ripping it up. Uh, it, you, did you see the uh, the player poll where everybody still had him as the most complete player in the NHL? All the players. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I agree. The guy's 34 years old. Uh, he's fantastic. I mean, I, I've i said it before on the show that he's uh, he's the best grinder of all time. <laughs> most talented, yeah. most skilled. And best at, best at grinding than anybody. I mean, the guy's fantastic in front of the net. He gets no one talks about you know. We talk about oh yeah, uh, you know you got the Dino Cicerellis and the the Thomas Holmstroms. Uh, you know these guys that are just so good in front of the net that uh, that have kind of gone down as that guy. Ooh, Crosby blows those guys out of the water. He did the exact same thing. He just could do way more, so he didn't have to do that all the time. Uh, but yeah, he's 
he's fantastic. If the Penguins are going to win, it's going to be because of him and, and Getzel. I mean, if the Rangers can shut that top line down, um, you know, it's it's maybe a little more dicey with with the goaltending situation. But I I just this is really a hard series to call to be honest because the the Rangers kind of they kind of have the same the same disabilities I'll say as as each other like not a lot of depth once you go down the lineup defensively uh forward depth way down the lineup it you know it 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 falls off uh, it's really maybe it just comes down to that goaltending cuz Shesterkin versus Casey DeSmith uh especially if Jari doesn't come back and who knows what shape Jari's in when he does come back Maybe this is the Rangers series. You know, maybe this is the Penguins out in the first round again. Yeah, I mean, you talk about death, right? That third line for the Rangers, Alex Lafreniere, Barclay, Goudreau. There's a guy who knows how to get it done, who knows how to grind and produce in the playoffs. So that could be detrimental to the Penguins, especially, again, I know they've got a lot of guys on their side, too, that know what it takes to grind out in the playoffs. But, um you know, again, the goaltending, right, is obviously the biggest concern for me. And so um, that's why I just I don't see Pittsburgh lasting. Now, I think this series is going to seven games. I, I really do. I, I think that both teams have the they've, – they've got what it takes to push the other team to keep it close. Man, I have a – this is the hardest series in my mind to pick. Uh, out of any series across the league, this is the hardest one to pick uh, because – both teams could win in any way. Like it could be if the Rangers won at four one, I go, eh, okay, that doesn't surprise me that much. If the Penguins swept the Rangers, I, that wouldn't surprise me that much either. Like I, I feel like this one's so tough to call. Uh, so I'm just going with the team that has won more. I'm going with the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm going with the old school. Uh, maybe one one final run. Uh, you know, maybe the Penguins play the Bruins in round two, which would be a, a pretty fun re like rematch there between the the like the Crosby Bergeron. It might not get get any better than that. Like a one last time playing against each other in the playoffs, most likely uh, that would be fun. Uh, but I'm going Penguins. I, I'll do it in seven. Okay. Wow. Well, I've got the Rangers in six for this one. I think, you know, obviously the one knock on the Rangers in past playoff years has been that they've been a little soft. Um, But they went out, and I think they solved it this year, getting Barclay Goudreau, Ryan Reeves. They bring these guys. Tyler Mott is slated. He's a possible return for game one. If not, I mean, he will return at some point in the season, and so that makes them a little bit more grittier. So to me, I think the Rangers ultimately get it done with no Tristan Jari on the other end. Okay. Uh, we come to our final series, the Leafs and the Lightning. Uh, I mean, I may, I know I said that the the Penguins Rangers was a hard series to pick. Um, this series is just easy for me to pick because I'm like, I just can't pick. Against, I can't pick against the Leafs in this one. Also, also, I just don't think, I don't think they're going to lose this series. Like, this is it. I mean, the, everything gets. Coaches are fired. GM is fired. Everything goes to hell if they lose this series. Like, there is so much pressure. Uh, and I think that it's actually good for this young team that there's this much pressure. Uh, because this team still is, like, having a lot of fun when they're out playing. Uh, you're you're about to get... I mean, they were up 3-1 on the team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year. And that was all without John Tavares. So maybe maybe they can get through a game one without one of their top players getting injured in the first ten minutes. That would be great, uh, and and I I think they would be they they match up probably at, other than the Florida Panthers better than any other team in the Eastern Conference. Uh, I the the only thing that scares the living bejesus out of me is uh, Mister I'm going to score three points every freaking game now. <laughs> Stamkos, I mean, what he had, he almost tied the record for most consecutive three point games. He does five games in a row with three points, one game with two points, and then the next game he gets a hat trick. <laughs> it's just Dude. unreal. I think it was twenty six points in uh, in twenty six points in nine games is what he's done now. 
Just nuts. Just unreal. An unbelievable entity. That's like video game. You can barely do that in a video game <laughs> if you're playing on any <laughs> level of difficulty. Uh, yeah, I mean, Stamkos is, is uh, coming in real hot, but everybody goes back to zero in the playoffs. So it can be hot, and especially against teams that don't care anymore. Uh, granted, they I know they smoked the Leafs 8-1. No Matthews in that one. and uh, I, I'm... I don't think you're looking at that game going, oh, yep, this is how the playoffs are going to go. Uh, I think they'll they'll come ready. I guess uh, the one the one factor for me for the Leafs is going to be Jack Campbell. Can he can he be serviceable enough to beat Andre Vasilevsky, who is the best goaltender in these playoffs? Yep, you said it. I mean, because again, right? You look at this Ford group. I could pretty much the, the core of Ford players on this. This on both of these teams are unreal. I mean, right. look, Steven Stamkos, we know what he did to close out the season, but this is a guy who has never had 100 points in his career, is just firing on all cylinders. Nikita Kucherov is almost at one and a half points per game at points. I mean, his his point pay, you know, per game pace is just unreal. And Braden Point, let's not forget, this is a guy who has been phenomenal for this team, you know, the last two playoff runs, but he he hasn't even hit a point per game pace this year. He's had almost a down year, if you want to call it that. So, you know, if he shows up in the playoffs, that's just another factor to take take into account. So, uh, again, these forward groups, both of them are phenomenal. I think it's going to be, you know, could end up being a high-scoring affair for both teams. But, again, what it comes down to is really the goaltending, right? Jack Campbell, he's, you know, a little unproven in the playoffs, coming against the two-time Stanley Cup winner, the guy who basically has all the hardware you can think of in the world and has nothing left to really prove in this game except for maybe, you know, we can three-peat for the first time since New York Islanders. So, I mean... Yeah, gosh, something that has only happened, what, like four or five times in the history of the league, a three-peat? Right. Oh. I mean, yeah, the playoffs are a grind, right? And so that's the other concern for Tampa, right? If you're If you're on that bench, you know, do you have what it takes to really grind it out with with Toronto, as I imagine, the series will probably go seven games, if anything. Uh, you know, so have those last two playoff runs really had their toll on you? Now, granted, the one thing you could say, you know, in in, in relation to that is they didn't have to go through two full sets of eighty-two game seasons the last two playoff runs. So maybe there's point. you know a little less wear and tear on their body that most other teams would have trying to go through this. But I mean, really, this is just going to be to me the funnest series to watch out of all of them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just two absolute juggernauts going toe-to-toe. Uh, it's going to be an unbelievable series. I mean, it, the difference is is that Tampa Bay, and th- and this could be good and bad, uh, Tampa Bay doesn't have a lot to lose. Like, if they lose, well, we won two Stanley Cups in a row. Um, and we lost to maybe the other most talented team. Like, in the Eastern Conference, at least, the other most talented team outside of the Florida Panthers. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, is if you lose, if you're Florida, even if you get swept, really, I mean, if, for Tampa Bay, if you get swept even, you can literally just go back and be like, ah, well, you know, we had a long last two playoff runs, yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's to be expected. Now, they're, they're not going to they're not gonna sweep them. Uh, no, no. No, no doubt about that. Um, and, and they are certainly going to... I, I don't think that I'm super worried about Tampa Bay being tired in round one. I think maybe you start to to consider that round two, round three, uh, if if they get that far. Hopefully they don't. Uh, <laughs> but I I mean I I do think that there's there's this like there's a hunger, and when you've won it two two times in a row, I mean of course I've never won a Stanley Cup. Um, the things that I've won are uh, pale in comparison. But I do know that after you win the next season, it is harder to to like oh well we lost. We won last year. We'll win it. We'll win it again. You know, it's it is hard not to uh, not to adopt that mindset. And I, I know these guys are professionals, and uh, and you know they, I'm sure that they want to win. Uh, and there's guys on that team who have never won the cup, so there is that. But the Leafs are in this position where, I mean, if you, if you lose this series, especially like John Tavares, how do you come back as the captain next year? How does John Tavares come back as the captain next year? There's no way. There is no way he comes back as the captain. I don't. He at least he shouldn't. He shouldn't come back as the captain. And Sheldon Keefe probably not coming back as the head coach. And Kyle Dubas is probably going to get fired. I I think that it's that dire that they win a playoff series 
Uh, maybe barring like Tampa Bay wins game seven overtime. But man, even then, I think you just have to go. We have to wash our hands of this. It, we're, we're not, we're not there. Uh, and, and someone, someone probably with a pretty big name is, is going to get dealt. Not Marner or Matthews, but someone else. Right. And that's the thing, right? All that pressure on this Toronto Maple Leafs team, right? Is that going to weigh on them? Is that going to, I mean, are they going to be gripping their sticks a little bit tighter on the ice saying we can't lose? I mean, not only just, just from a fan standpoint, but the media is going to be, if they go down in that first game, the media is going to be all over them. Like, oh, you guys, is this the same Toronto team we've been seeing the last two years that just can't get out of the first round, yada, yada, you mean, yada? And, you, you mean know, five years, the last Right. <laughs> yeah, so does – and then from a mental standpoint, does that start sinking in? You're like, well, shoot, maybe we really can't do that. Maybe this team we have isn't just capable of that. And then, of course, you know, like you said, we'll lead to a lot of changes in the offseason if they don't get past the first round. So Right, especially since this is the – like this was a conversation last year. They they lose in brutal fashion, and they essentially got one more chance because hey, it was a yeah. really weird year. It was COVID. Blah 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 blah. Uh, make lots of excuses, but here we go. I mean, this is this is the the biggest. There's no team out there uh, where their first round is a bigger test. The Tampa Bay Lightning are the the freaking monster, and you know what? Usually in a video game, you the first level you get some little easy guy. No, not in this one. In this one, you're playing the the behemoth first. Um, oh, and then by the way, the behemoth's little like big brother is is next in Florida if you win this series. So it's going to be man. If the Leafs or Tampa get to the conference finals, it's going to be a like. I don't know if either team will have the gas to pl- to beat whoever they play in the in the third round because then whoever wins that they're going to play probably Calgary or, or Colorado. It's going to be uh, there are some like the teams that whoever wins the cup are going to have to beat in the Eastern Conference. If the East wins the cup, might be one of the best teams that we've seen um, in the salary cap era because of the teams well. that they had to beat in the playoffs. Yeah, and let me just tell you this, because I know you said Cal- Calgary or Colorado. I filled out my bracket on NHL.com, and I have neither one of those teams going to the Stanley Cup final. Well, you, my friend, are a fool. No, I'm just, I'm <laughs> I just, just love no. picking a wild card sometimes. Sure, right? just sure. love picking that odd team to beat to beat out the... the I mean, beast. let's go. Leafs at Oilers, Stanley Cup <laughs> final. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, that an would all-Canadian be... Stanley Cup final. It would be unreal. Uh, it would be. I mean, or it could be Leafs Calgary. That'd be fine too. Yeah, yeah that would be something. <laughs> I, I mean, let's be honest. We all want to see Calgary and Edmonton in the playoffs, which has a good chance of happening. Has a yes. good chance of happening. It's gonna be fun. All right. Well, uh, let's hear it. Prediction for Leafs Tampa. Yeah, I've got to go in seven. You're not gonna like it, but I think I've got the the Stanley Cup champs oh, taking I, out the oh, Toronto Maple Leafs. I I, I like it because. Uh, it's just yet another opportunity for me to prove you wrong because we've picked, <laughs> we've picked pretty similar here. So um, okay. I get, I'm of course going the Leafs, uh, but I think they're going to get it done a little quicker. I'm going to go Leafs in six here. Okay. Yep, it's going to be uh, going to be not quick, but it's going to be a series. It's going to be a do like I think we're looking at overtimes and I mean maybe like a six five overtime kind of deal you know where it's just everyone's trading goals and i I think this is going to be such a fun series dude i sure hope so and i hope we get a good jack campbell a good goaltending battle yeah because i mean not necessarily like you have to put up ridiculous numbers or you have to have close games one to nothing two to one games i just want those guys making good saves not letting in weak goals and then just watching these offensive just offensive dynamos just go to work i'm in for that um well there are our Stanley Cup playoff first round predictions. Let us know what you think. Hit us on OT Ho- at OT Hockey Talk on Twitter, and uh, you know, good good luck to all the teams. Really, if there's one thing that I hope for, it's just a healthy first round where we get to see the best teams and the best players play the entire playoffs. Like that's that's always my wish because it always sucks when like like it. it 
Tavares going down last year, that sucks. You know, if if Crosby went down or, or Bergeron, like any of these high-end guys go down for these teams, they're probably going to lose. And it it sucks. Like, it sucks when the when the best players in the world, when I mean, you don't get to watch them. So uh, I wish the best of health to all these guys going into the playoffs. And uh, it's going to be a doozy. Yep. Yep. Couldn't agree more. You hate to see teams lose without their top guys on the ice. Yep. So uh, let's hope not not for any of that. Although it seems to always happen. Uh, but, anyways, we will. Uh, you know, we'll talk to you guys throughout the playoffs and uh, enjoy round one uh, today. Probably when you're listening to this on Monday. Enjoy. <laughs>